Hi guys, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video, let's do the review of this IQ Z3 smartphone. And uh, this is the most affordable smartphone by IQ. And guys, some of you have complained that I didn't review earlier the IQ 7 and stuff like that. The reason for that was that during that time frame, we got a lot more popular smartphones. And guys, you know, uh, for my full reviews, it takes a lot of time because I actually test them and use it in daily life. That's why uh, at that time, the OnePlus 9R, the regular OnePlus 9 Pro, came so I was testing that and even the Mi 11 X came so during that time I didn't get the time to test out the IQ 7 uh, but now I have actually used this IQ Z3 and uh, the base variant of this one is uh, being sold for 20,000 that's with 6 gigabytes of RAM and now I have used it so let me uh, tell you is this the right smartphone for you and what are the good things about this smartphone and what are the some of the annoying things that I have noticed about this one and trust me guys there's some things are really annoying about this one and i hope uh, iq takes this as feedback and improves it in their future smartphone so let's uh, get into that and guys i won't get into the physical aspects and other specs here are the quick specs for your reference but again watch my unboxing video if you want to get a general overview i'll leave the link in the description and also the card so let's break it down between pros and cons first let's talk about the pros what did i like and then we'll move to the things that i did not like and the first thing is I like the screen. It's a 6.58 inch screen. So I like the size, guys. Uh, it's not a massive 6.8. So yes, it's still a big phone, but not super, super big. And I like the fact that it's a 120 hertz screen. Hence, uh, the scrolling on this one is actually really smooth. As you can see, even with this economic times, it's a pretty heavy side. If you notice, the scrolling is very smooth. Uh, it has that 120 hertz and the processor is able to handle that 120 hertz. So you don't get those jitters and stuff like uh, we get in some of the mid-range smartphones that have high refreshed it so in that way if you see the ui is very fluid on this the screen quality is a decent one it's an ips lcd screen i wish it was an amulet screen uh overall it's a nice screen but the con is that uh, indoors it's perfectly uh, fine I would say but in outdoors I felt when it was direct sunlight was there the screen could have been brighter it's not like it's not visible at all but I wish it was brighter okay let's move to the next thing and uh, uh, that is regarding the processor on this one uh, this one has the snapdragon 768 and in fact this is the first smartphone in India that is coming with the snapdragon 768 uh, and I have to say the performance of this smartphone is actually really good it handles this 120 hertz refresh rate without any issues as you can see the ui is very smooth so in terms of performance definitely this processor is far better than the snapdragon 750 uh, and other mid-range processors that we are seeing so that way it's a good processor and also i ran some uh, benchmarks for example and to do and stuff uh, 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 this is Anto 2 and uh, let me uh, yeah as you can see very respectable scores 4,53,000 that we are getting on this one so that means the overall performance of this smartphone is actually pretty good for a mid-range smartphone I in fact I had also ran uh, what do you call a geek bench I saved the benchmarks well, these are some of the uh, image uh, snaps I'll show you that later but let me show you the Geekbench benchmarks and as you can see for single core we got a very healthy score of 724 and for multi core we got a score of 2046 so what does this all mean it's a good processor and in day-to-day -day activities uh, multitasking moving between the apps and stuff no issues of lack that you will notice on this phone as you can see even this is 120 Hertz I did all my testing at 120 Hertz guys not in the lower refresh rate then also I did not face any UI jankiness or lagginess on this phone and I like that now on the left if you go this is again that fun touch uh, ui uh, which we generally get with the uh, vivo phones it's the same thing but they have improved it a little bit on the left if you go you get the google pane and that works as you can see they tried to mimic now closer to stock android in terms of ui as you can see but there are some very annoying things about this ui i'll talk about that in the later part that is in the con section okay let's move to the next good thing that i liked about this smartphone and that is regarding the call quality on this one and the network reception i tested this one in hyderabad city where i live uh, with the geo sim and my primary that is atel sim and with both i did not have a problem with the smartphone in fact the call quality was actually pretty good with the smartphone and even the earpiece 
is actually good on this one. So in terms of call quality, no issues. In fact, another great thing that I liked about this smartphone, and this is a practical thing, as I've told you, I like to do practical testing, not just bench based on numbers. The proximity sensor is also calibrated very well on this smartphone, and I did not have any issues while even taking long calls. So for calls, I did not have a issue with this smartphone. That way, they have done actually a good job. Uh, now moving to uh, another thing is this is a small thing that I noticed and I feel the haptic feedback uh, vibration motor calibration also is done fairly well on this one. Yes, don't compare it to flagships or something that'll be stupid. But uh, for a mid-range smartphone, I feel the haptics are decent on this smartphone. Uh, okay, next uh, thing that I like is the fingerprint. Again, this is a common thing that I've noticed with almost every smartphone that has the side bounded fingerprint scanner. As you can see, it works instantly. It's a power button come a fingerprint scanner. And here also, uh, it's the same thing as you can see, very reliable. So don't have to worry. You can just keep your finger also, it unlocks, or you can just do this press action also, then also it works. So very reliable fingerprint scanner, but this is uh, nothing unique. Almost every smartphone that I've used with the side mounted fingerprint scanner uh, works very well. Same case, even. Uh, with this one. The next thing uh, that I liked on this smartphone is regarding the battery. Uh, it doesn't have that massive 5000 or a 6000 milliamp hour battery that we are generally seeing in the uh, mid-range smartphone. This has a 4400 milliamp hour battery and I would say in my testing it easily lasts for a typical working day, full working day and end of the day I generally was having about 20 to 25 percent ba uh, battery left based on my usage. So it's a typical one day, full one day work uh, working life that I was getting on this one but it's not a two day battery life but the good thing is that as this comes with a bundle 55 watt charger even at night sometimes I would, when i was forgetting charging at morning when you plug it in uh, within half an hour it juices up almost to full so that way i would say the battery life and the charging speeds are very good so if you are a person who mostly uh, charges your phone every day or once in about one and a half days then you will not have a problem but this is not like a two day battery life on the smartphone so that way battery life is good because of the fast charging and glad that you don't have to buy that charger separately. It's bundled in that box. 55 watt uh, charging is what is supported on this one. Okay, now moving to another thing is uh, because of the processor, uh, I'm not a big gamer guys, I'll, big disclaimer. I don't play games continuously, but I did play uh, this Call of Duty for some time and even Battlegrounds, the new one. And both of them actually, I had pretty good experience. In fact, Call of Duty, I did take a screenshot. Let me see if I can show you guys. Uh, where did it save the screenshot? Uh, I think so. It saves in games. Yeah, as you can see, uh, I played a couple of games easily. I was uh, ranking up on the uh, top best, and uh, this is uh, with the very high setting. Uh, it allows you to go to that very high setting also. So gaming, uh, gaming performance was actually fine. I just played these two games on this one, and it was fine. But Again, if you want hardcore gaming experience, check other YouTube channels that do continuous gaming for two, three hours. I just played it for about 25 minutes and the gaming experience was fine. Okay, now let's move to the camera. It has the triple camera, but uh, let's not bother about the rubbish uh, last two megapixel. Uh, the main is the 64 megapixel that we have a wide angle lens. So let's concentrate on that. And uh, here are some of the samples that I shot so that you get a better idea. So as you can see, these are some outdoor uh, shots. We also have the 2x zoom, so I used it again one more shot outdoors. And this was with that wide angle. And outdoors, as expected, it's actually doing a pretty good job. These were taken in my kitchen in not that great lighting conditions. And as you can see, again, this was in our uh, indoor lighting. And here, uh, this was the wide angle. And uh, this was, uh, again, a little bit of light was coming. And here I closed the light to simulate how it does in dark conditions. Here I just switched on the tube light. And as you can see, this was different. Again, same thing, switched off the lights. And here I just switched on one tube light and moving to uh, human subjects as you can see the skin tones are produced pretty well but in portrait mode that extra whitening is there on the skin and this was a regular shot that came out good uh, these are some of the samples that uh, we took uh, uh, when we had our covert second shot and again as you can see these shots actually came out good this was taken in artificial lighting in my office again as you can see these were good this was the regular shot with the front facing 16 megapixel camera and the front facing camera as you can see is doing actually a pretty good job these were taken in artificial indoor lighting conditions 
But here I enable the portrait mode and again notice that whitening on the face. This was regular shot. Again that portrait mode. And in portrait mode it whitens up your skin. So definitely I would say the camera performance is also very good. Uh, outdoors yes almost every smartphone does a good job outdoors but this one even in indoor lighting artificial lighting conditions I felt the camera did a good job. Yes in portrait mode it tries to beautify you too much or lighten your skin, uh, skin a little bit more I would say so you got to be careful about it and just tone down all the settings by default it is very very aggressive but overall I would say uh, the camera performance was pretty good uh, I feel I hope in portrait that extra skin whitening that they are doing they tone it down now let's move to uh, some of the cons that I have noticed on this one and pay attention to this one guys and the first thing that I do not like is uh, the back is plastic guys don't expect glass or anything I'm, I'm not complaining about that but if you notice this one uh, this is a sort of a fingerprint magnet guys uh, they should have used a different kind of a coating so if you use it with a case it is going to become dirty within 10 minutes of usage so that is something that I have noticed but fortunately still this is resisting what you say uh, scratches I've used it normally with the uh, keys inside my pocket and just putting the phone like this and still I didn't get scratches but again this is a fingerprint magnet they could have used a matte finish that would have looked actually even better I would say anyways uh, uh, moving to the next thing I really miss on the smartphone is uh, yes this one has a 3.5 mm headphone jack and I'm glad about that because these days many of the phones are omitting uh, that also so we have that but we don't have a stereo speaker so that is something that I am missing and particularly when I was playing games these uh, online uh, games uh, when you have stereo speakers you just come to know enemies coming from this side or that side so I miss that on this one uh, so yeah they should have given a stereo speakers because the base variant is about 20,000. So that is something that I miss. Uh, next thing now, let's come to the annoyance that I have with the smartphone. And that is based on software and some of the idiotic things that they have done. For example, okay, first, as you saw, this is nice. Almost talk like Android experience you're giving. You're giving an app tray and all this thing. But notice what? If I just swipe like this, this is a search. You have to agree for all this bullshit. And that is really, really annoying. Okay, I'm not going to do this because it's just scary the amount of stuff that. And you open the app tray and with any Android phone, you have the search app because if you have too many apps, just finding, scrolling, scrolling, it can take time, right? Here, if you just press the search, again, you have to agree to all this crap. I don't get it, why? Who designed this? Why does a person have to agree to all this to do even a basic search? So I feel, Aiku takes this into uh, consideration. Come on, man. You just can't shove. Uh, uh, every user has to agree to a lot, lot, lot of terms for even doing basic stuff like this. Another thing that I noticed is, and this was again enabled by default. In the Chrome browser, I have disabled it now. Uh, by default, when you go to the Chrome browser and open a new tab, now it's not coming. Here, again, it adds a lot of junk on this Google home page. And uh, why, how it does that is go to the settings. If you go to the settings and uh, here you have the home page, I've switched it off. This is actually switched on. And as you can see, it is going specifically to a uh, Vivo home page, which is filled with junk. So when you get this phone, just disable that. And apart from that, uh, I was also getting some unnecessary notifications here in the phone by default. And I've actually made a separate folder for all the junk uh, that we had. So let's have a look. For example, if you go to this extra junk, by default, this uh, browser is enabled. This is a built-in browser. This is not with just this phone, even Realme, etc. They have a browser app. This will send you unnecessary notifications. So you have to disable it, those unnecessary notifications. Also, this Wii App Store, which is again a own app store by Vivo is also installed. So again, you have to disable notifications even from that one themes. So these are the junk apps that are pre-installed and they will send you notifications. So you have to manually disable them. And again, there's a bunch load of junk that is available called hot apps. Again, you have to agree. Please don't do that. Please don't agree to that. And another thing is this hot games. Again, this is indirectly forcing you to actually use their app store. So I'm not using it that, but it is kind of forcing you. So again, these are some of the things that you have to disable on the smartphone before using it. And I have done it and now I haven't seen any unnecessary stuff over here, but I st it still irks me. I don't know why this search for basic Android app st search, you have to agree to this thing. It's stupid. I hope they just tone this rubbish down. So apart from that, again, the performance of the phone was good, but 
some of these things are default enabled uh, and while setting up the phone also it doesn't give you the choices to disable it so uh, Aiko really needs to look at their uh, Android setup uh, process when you're first setting up the phone and they should give the users choice to disable all this by default all this junk is enabled so that's my biggest issue with the smartphone okay anyways now uh, let's move to another thing is and this is for hardcore users guys uh, this uh, smartphone as of now i don't know if it changed the bootloader is sort of locked so people who like to install custom roms and stuff you are out of luck as of now i know many uh, people who buy xiaomi phones because they like the hardware but they don't like miui and on xiaomi phones you can easily install custom roms but as of now because they're blocking that bootloader unlocking that is sort of a tricky issue on this one. So if you're a hardcore user, you have to be aware of that. I hope, I hope Aiku opens it up because if they do that, it'll open up a lot of people because the hardware is good. If they don't want to use this software, the Funtouch UI, uh, they can do that. But as of now, it's a little bit on the uh, tricky side. Uh, next thing is uh, regarding the OTA updates. Uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, they have said that this phone will get two year, uh, next two years of Android updates. Uh, right now it's on Android 11. And uh, in fact, oh, not a brightness I've enabled, sorry. And in fact, uh, if uh, we go, uh, it's on Android 11, that's not a problem. If I go to about the phone, as you can see, Android 11 is there out of the box. That's not a problem with this one. Uh, but um, I don't know about uh, the security update situation. How quickly will they be releasing the security updates? As you can see, the Android security update right now is just May 1st. Uh, I was hoping that this smartphone will get a new OTA update because I wanted to test if they add more junk or stuff with OTA updates like what Samsung is doing in the M series. But still, I did not get any update. So I don't know about that. I hope they don't add junk with OTA updates. So guys, uh, this was my review of uh, this uh, uh, what do you say iku z3 smartphone overall actually it's a decent good smartphone the hardware point the price to hardware performance is actually pretty good on this one but again those software niggling issues are there in fact i wrote a summary about this one so let me just read it and um, this is what i felt after using uh, this smartphone basically it's a vivo smartphone with a bit uh, more bloatware to offset the cost so if you can uninstall and remove the bloatware, the price to performance is actually pretty good on the smartphone and the camera performance was also pretty good. But they should provide better setup options and by default, a lot of crapware nagware settings are enabled by default as I've showed you. And asking for a bunch of permission for the basic search of app within the app tree is ridiculous. So guys, uh, that was my review of this one. And I was also checking Amazon India. Again, guys, it's available on Amazon India. I'll leave the link if you're buying. Use my link, it does help the channel. I saw the user ratings. The user ratings of this one is actually pretty good. It's above four star. In fact, it's 4.3 star. So I think so. Many users are actually liking it. Anyways, guys, what do you feel about this IQ Z3? Do let me know in the comment section below. And if you have purchased this smartphone, share your feedback. It'll be helpful to even others. So anyways, guys, uh, that's it for now for this video if you guys are still not subscribed to the youtube channel hit that subscribe button this is ranji and i hope to see you in my next video take care guys